Like Green Arrow? No, not like Green Arrow. That dude goes to brony conventions dressed in the back half of Twilight Sparkle with a four inch wide butthole drilled in the costume. No, I actually heard that's true about Green Arrow, but that's the first thing he said that's real. An Aquaman fish. Well, yeah, obviously. Welcome back everyone, this will be my full DC Peacemaker Episode 8 finale video. There were so many big easter eggs, big cameo scenes we have to talk about too, big surprises. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. They also just confirmed the show has been renewed for Season 2, so of course I'll do videos for Season 2 when they start dropping footage and big details about what's happening. Careful for spoilers if you have not watched the episode yet. But just starting with the big stuff first, obviously everyone's going to be talking about the giant Justice League cameo scene, minus Batman and Cyborg. I'm so sick of that rumor. It's not a rumor. Barry. But it was actually Jason Momoa, legit, and Ezra Miller who came back to pay off the joke about him having sex with Fish. With Ezra Miller's flash just doubling down on the burn, like wait a minute, I thought that it was true. I'm assuming that Henry Cavill's Superman here and Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman were just full CG characters, like Henry Cavill himself didn't come back to film this scene and Gal Gadot didn't actually come back as Wonder Woman. That's why their characters are kind of covered in shadow, like you don't fully see their faces the way you see Aquaman's face and the Flash's face. James Gunn said that the episode would tease some upcoming big movies that would cross over with the movies. This is what he was talking about because both the Flash movie and Aquaman 2 are coming out later this year within a couple months of each other. Ben Affleck's Batman is coming back during the Flash movie as well, but I assume that there's just rules about having Batman on TV that they're really hardcore about. Like, okay, we'll give you most of the Justice League, but you can't have Batman. The Batman movie with Robert Pattinson coming out in a couple weeks probably also had something to do with that too. Like, okay, we have enough Batman going around. We don't need to have even more Batman on the TV show. Either way, it was super cool. It was a huge WTF surprise. I was not expecting this. I was expecting something smaller, like a small Green Lantern reference or cameo scene. But the actual title of the episode is It's Cow or Never, a reference to the butterflies, alien cow that they're trying to kill and the phrase It's Now or Never, because if they don't kill it now, the butterflies will finish teleporting it to their other secret base and finish taking over the world. The opening scene just picks up right where they left off in last week's episode with the cliffhanger, Leota trying to apologize to Peacemaker, but he and Vigilante just making all those fart noises because he's still pissed off at her till the end of the episode after she saves the day. With a little bit of teamwork and a little bit of human torpedo helmet, he explains his special vow to only kill people in the name of peace, saying that he took the vow because of his brother Keith's death. He made a vow so that no one would die for no reason, which is messed up for all kinds of reasons. As Leota kind of sarcastically throws at him, it's not really possible for Peacemaker himself to stop all death from being meaningless, but the idea is that Peacemaker's been using the vow as more of like an emotional crutch for the past 20 years or so, however long it's been that he's been killing people on the regular. It was his way of dealing or not dealing with the trauma, although to be fair, he did finally stand up to his father, White Dragon, so he's starting to deal with his trauma, but the whole bit with him hallucinating White Dragon is just a way to show you that he's got a lot of therapy work ahead of him. It's going to be a long time before he completely deals with all of his metaphorical demons. And they do clarify during the episode, it's not a butterfly trick or anything, like he's not on drugs or anything, even though he does do a lot of drugs. It's just a manifestation of his own personal trauma coming through his subconscious. He's literally just yelling at himself here. It's also a really clever way for them to bring Robert Patrick back in season two, even though they killed the character off. Have White Dragon continue yelling crazy WTF stuff at him all the time. Vigilante reveals that Eagle is his second best friend after Peacemaker. Then Leota name drops the Justice League to her mother Amanda Waller, setting up their big cameo scene, asking her to call them in because the butterflies are too big of a threat for their small team to handle. And because they do show up at the end of the episode, even though it sounds like Amanda Waller was yelling at her on the other side of the phone, like, just continue with the mission, it does confirm that Amanda Waller did in fact call in the Justice League. You're late, you dickheads. The butterflies reveal that the cow is female and it is a holy cow, like holy cow the phrase, and they confirm the other secret base that they're teleporting it to is in Maine on the eastern seaboard of the United States. They bring back all of Peacemaker's weird funny helmets and pay off a whole bunch of jokes. There's an underwater world one that just allows you to breathe underwater. They bring back the scabies helmet joke. He calls it scabies for all saying that everyone in a one mile radius will get it except for the wear. This is actually a big change from that post credit scene with the helmet too earlier in the season. During that scene, his father actually told him that it only gave the wearer scabies and that he created it because everyone should have scabies at least once in their life. All the post credit scenes are mostly just outtakes and bloopers though, so you have to consider them kind of like deleted scenes. There's an anti-gravity helmet and completely unironically, this isn't a joke, Peacemaker says that he uses a tiny hand fan to push himself around in the air. 
They bring back the Sonic Boom helmet from episode one, the one he used on the female butterfly that he hooked up with, and there's a human torpedo helmet, which they obviously use at the end of the episode to kill the cow saying that it literally turns you into human missile, which they pay off at the end of the episode. Also the joke being that because it's a prototype, it doesn't give you any type of personal shielding or reinforcement. It just shatters every bone in your body upon impact, depending on what you use it for. And then Peacemaker has the most wicked of Green Arrow burns. Remember, this is the DCEU too, so when he's joking about Green Arrow, he's confirming that there is an Oliver Queen Green Arrow in the DCEU. No idea who'd be playing him. You can post all your theories about that. But basically he's saying the DCEU Green Arrow is a brony who's secretly a full-on furry who goes to brony conventions dressed as one of the My Little Pony characters in full cosplay with an extra large butthole in the costume for exactly the reason that you think someone would do that. And Economos corroborates it. He's like, yeah, I heard that that's true. Green Arrow definitely does that. He also confirms Peacemaker was not lying about Aquaman having sex with fish. Now, obviously, they play it for a big joke at the end of the episode when the Justice League characters actually show up and Aquaman's like, I hate that rumor. So you can also decide if Peacemaker is also incorrect about what was happening with Green Arrow. Maybe we'll see a version of Green Arrow show up when they do more Black Canary projects because I believe they're bringing DCEU Black Canary back either in the Batgirl movie or for her own project on HBO Max. We'll see. They have this big eagerly joke about him being super smart secretly but then just playing it for a funny moment. Like for a hot second, you think eagerly is a genius but then like nope, nope, he's just a regular eagle. After he hallucinates his father for the first time, just sort of setting up the scene at the end of the episode, he reaffirms his pledge at the end of last week's episode after he killed his father that even though he wasn't going to kill innocent people anymore, he had no trouble killing the butterflies or like really, really terrible people, which is why he looks so sure of himself when he kills the butterfly guards and they have the most heinous of crappy pants jokes. Now you want me to risk my life while wearing diarrhea pants? Hey, nobody said anything about diarrhea. I said it was shit. Was it diarrhea? Yes, it was. When Peacemaker says he washed the guard's clothes for Economos because he crapped his pants when he died, that is an actual thing in real life. People do void their bowels when they die. So just be prepared for that. When you die someday, everyone finds your body, your family, you will have probably just have crapped your pants. Just something to look forward to. We get a much better look at the full cow and they drop another Godzilla Toho MonsterVerse Kaiju reference when Economos says that it's like a giant caterpillar paying off the big joke about Mothra at the beginning of the series in episode one. Project Butterfly? Are we fighting a giant Mothra this time? Because we fought a giant starfish in Project Starfish. Turns out Peacemaker was right on the money. They also pay off the joke about him dyeing his beard that Peacemaker has been yelling about all season and turns into this big sob story, sad confession about how sad his life has been and he's never had a girlfriend. They really want you to feel bad for Economos. After they use the Sonic Boom helmet a bunch of times, they whip out Peacemaker's shield from all the trailers. It's got a giant dove of peace on it. He's all about the branding. He also puts another dove of peace on one of his guns before they roll out. But James Gunn and John Cena said that they designed the Peacemaker character to be like douchey Captain America and Captain America uses a shield. They give the whole team a bunch of sick takedowns while they're playing the theme music from the intro scene. Do you really want to taste it? But then everybody has their own version of like a WTF rug pull scene where even though they do get a bunch of takedowns, they themselves all get taken down in really crazy ways. Like Peacemaker crashes through pretty much every single level of the staircase down to the bottom. All the scenes of the team here going down are just meant to reinforce the idea that they're a ragtag group of a-holes without any superpowers who stumble their way through saving the world. That's why they reference the Justice League earlier in the episode and then have the cameo scene at the end. Just showing you what it would be like if regular people without superpowers tried to pull something like this off. Like they would all really get hurt. That's why they all wind up in the hospital at the end as opposed to the Justice League characters who would just shrug something like this off. The Butterfly Queen winds up saving Peacemaker and even though they fight a little bit, she tries to win him over by explaining the truth of their plan. Also confirming why Judo Master was working for them because she won him over with the truth. The flaming Hot Cheetos had nothing to do with it. The Cheetos weren't some kind of countermeasure for the butterflies. They didn't try to turn him into a butterfly because he was working for them. And he was just eating the flaming Hot Cheetos because he liked them. And because in real life, James Gunn just likes them. Maybe there was a little product placement there too. But they also do bring back the flaming Hot Cheetos joke at the end of the episode when they're giving everybody their tag scene and you see him crying after he sees what's happened to all the butterflies. The actual truth of the butterflies that the queen explains to him is that they came to Earth because their planet had become unlivable as a result of her people's own mistakes. 
and they took a vow, like peacemakers vow, to never let something like that happen again. So when they came to Earth and saw that humans were slowly destroying themselves, destroying the Earth, just like the butterflies had done to their own planet, they decided to change their plan and take over the planet in order to save the human race. Her appeal to Peacemaker is also meant to be a parallel for this scene with Rick Flagg and the Suicide Squad, when Rick Flagg is trying to get Peacemaker to do the right thing, the moral choice. And just like he did during the Suicide Squad movie, he seemingly chooses the mission over the common good, depending on what you think the moral choice is here. Like, what is the actual right choice? It's meant to be a very gray area. Like, there's no right or wrong answer. But even though he does kill the butterfly, sentencing the butterflies who are still alive around the world to death, the reason why this isn't a backtrack on his character development to become a better person is because of the reason why he chose the mission over what might have been the moral choice, depending on how you look at it. He says he wasn't actually choosing the mission over the common good. He was actually choosing his new friends, the team, saying that he killed the cow to protect the team because he knew that if he helped the butterflies, Amanda Waller would just kill the whole team, detonating all the bombs in their heads. It's meant to be another parallel for the ending of the Suicide Squad movie. So R.I.P. Butterfly Kaiju Cow, the cow did nothing wrong. She was a good girl. He kills the lock butterfly, but saves the butterfly queen or spares her. She shows up at his house at the end of the episode, so it's implied that he either collected her at some point while they were leaving or she just traveled to his home. He pours a little honey for her to eat, so either he has more stash where that came from, like there is other existing supply of honey around the world that they could probably use to keep her alive. Maybe they'll bring her back during season two as part of the team, but then they actually pay off their huge Justice League cameo scene. And I love the way the Peacemaker just blows right past him like, you're late, dickheads. Like I said, I think it was only Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller who came back to put the costumes on and film this scene as Aquaman and the Flash, just to pay off the joke about him doing it with fish. And Superman and Wonder Woman were just computer generated. James Gunn also said there's like 30 minutes of deleted scenes of this Justice League scene with alternate takes of Ezra Miller and Jason Momoa just yelling funny things at each other as they walk off. Maybe they'll release them at some point. I haven't seen them anywhere online yet. Just to explain the timeline here too, this is taking place after the events of the Suicide Squad movie, obviously, which itself took place after the events of the Justice League Snyder Cut, but it's happening before the events of the Flash movie in Aquaman 2. That's why Ezra Miller is still wearing his old Flash costume and Jason Momoa is still wearing the old Aquaman costume from the first Aquaman movie. This is probably the only F-bombs that you'll hear the Justice League themselves drop for a long, long time. Ben Affleck did drop two F-bombs, I think, during the Justice League Snyder Cut, so this would tie the record. Then I love this small detail here too, zoom and enhance. So even though they've gone to the hospital to get everyone treatment, you can see that on the way they stopped to get food and big gulps at the convenience store. Like everybody's dying, we need to get everybody treatment fast, but we're kind of hungry, so let's get some junk food first. Peacemaker then names Leota his new second best friend after eagerly, please nobody tell Vigilante. And Leota holds a big press conference to reveal all of Amanda Waller's secrets about the Suicide Squad, Task Force X, The Fake Diary, Project Butterfly, pretty much everything that Amanda Waller has been doing. There's a big Easter egg here with a news truck. It says Charlton Channel 5 News. It's an Easter egg for the original Charlton comics where Peacemaker came from and the Fightin' Five team, which debuted in Peacemaker number five. Because this team now is kind of like a version of the Fightin' Five. There are literally five of them on the team. And this will be the team in season two, at least at the start. I'm assuming they'd pick up another member or two. But they bring back Amanda Waller for a cameo scene to react to the news like, oh, hell no. It's very similar to the way she ended the first Suicide Squad movie, reacting to the Suicide Squad turning on her like Bloodsport, turning on her with the information. And it's also meant to dovetail with Peacemaker's character arc, Leota standing up to her mother the same way that he stood up to his father. Even though this is only the beginning, like this is not the end by any means. This will spill into season two and beyond. There will be huge ramifications for what Leota just did. Economos does go back to his sad little desk at Bell Rev, pulling out a framed version of the picture of them jamming out to the Hanoi Rocks 11th Street Kids song. Peacemaker and Vigilante go back to their fun times playing with weapons, testing out that same homemade bomb that he created earlier in the series from the giant tank shell. The Butterfly Queen returns to Peacemaker, implying that she'll maybe be alive during season two, assuming that they find some more honey out there somewhere. I'm sure there's more supply that they could find around the world to keep her alive. He hallucinates his father again, who just kind of smiles at him, just implying that he's going to continue hallucinating him into season two. In the final post credit scene, is just a longer version of outtakes of Vigilante just not understanding sarcasm. But just some early season two predictions. The team will continue as it is here. Harcourt's still going to be the leader. There'll be some new threat that they have to deal with, some new villain group. 
but they won't have Amanda Waller's backing as much or as many resources because Amanda Waller's going to be under investigation after what Leota did outing the whole program. James Gunn also confirmed my theory that they would explain what's going on with Peacemaker's father's folding space armory, that pocket dimension that he has, what's going on with all the weapons, and how he created all that stuff, where he got it from in the first place. That'll be a big thing in season two. James Gunn also revealed that he has a totally separate second Suicide Squad spinoff TV series with a different character that he's working on, but he didn't say which character is for, so you can post all your theories about that in the comments. If you spotted any other big Easter eggs in the episode that I didn't talk about during the video, just write them below in the comments. The next big series that I'll be doing episode videos for will be for Marvel's Moon Knight series. I'll also probably do some Halo episode videos too, because that'll be airing around the same time that Moon Knight episodes start. I will be doing videos for the Batman movie soon. I'm going to be posting my review video as soon as the embargo is up. I think that's going to be at the end of the month. So be sure to go see the Batman movie as soon as you can. And congratulations, Preston Watton. You're the giveaway winner for those knives that I was giving away in my last episode video. Please email me on the about page of my channel on desktop so I can get your contact info and I can get those sent to you. Everyone click here for my full Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness trailer video from the Super Bowl and click here for my Moon Knight Super Bowl trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.